Hey, hello everyone. So we are in talk with principal engineer of Intel, Mr. Anil Kumar. In this second part of this video, we will talk more about VLSI and also do you have some other good option other than this VLSI field? And for an electronics engineer, how to earn more money? And the most important question which he answered in this entire series probably it is related to the work-life balance. Because as he is in this industry for three decades, so he know how to optimize your each day so that you really get a great work-life balance in this VLSI industry. So don't miss that part. And you know the drill, right? You need to like this video right now. So let's get started. So now we will shift our gear and and the question, next question is that anybody who did their uh, BTEX on electronics or master on electronics, do you think only VLSI is their career or there is something more else we have in the uh, world of amazing electronics? VLSI is not the only career that people can go into, right? So they can do their MBA, learn, uh, um, they can go do a PhD in slightly different areas, right? In engineering management. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can diversify with your basic engineering degree into many different places, either by getting a degree or, you know, so oftentimes you start working in some other organizations where you join as a management trainee and you eventually go into a management. Uh, coming back to the engineering, people can go into uh, telecommunications, data communications, cybersecurity, quality control for design, um, design automation, tool design, uh, FPG engineers, do, developing IPs, application engineers who help take these chips and apply into different customer systems. Uh, eventually, you can do, become product marketing engineers, you can be an architect, um, you can be a software engineer, develop the BIOS or the firmware related to the hardware. So um, there are many, many different opportunities. VLSI is not the only place to start or VLSI is not the only place to end. There is a whole slew of different careers available for people doing electronics or computer engineering or uh, um, related uh, data sciences, information technology, etc. right? So um, you, you oftentimes new innovation happens at the intersection of different technologies. So you should be able to do different things. You, know, you should be flexible yeah. and willing to pick up new skills as you mm -hmm. go back. Mm -hmm. And you have people who like to do hardware stuff. So for them, by default choice is VLSI, go for VLSI. But what your thought on embedded or IoT design or PCB design? Th those are all growing um, areas and they will all need a good uh, um, people who can be technically good and so uh, have all the business skills to take things forward, right? So um, if, if you have if you have a lot of VLSI design jobs, there will be a lot of verification jobs. The, these ICs will get used in embedded systems, uh, whether it is used for retail or healthcare or in the trains or in the planes or in the printer uh, or in the x-ray machine, etc. So those kind of jobs will also increase. So th those are all good jobs. They may pay slightly differently. They may not be exactly what you like. They may be that you want to do over and over again, right? So you gain the experience and then you move on. Uh, yeah, so you said like we can also pursue our ma master's or PhD, but for that we need to have a research mindset, right? So like going forward, how to develop a research mindset? Tough question for us to answer. Um, it, it all depends on what is interesting to you. Uh, do you want to work on like more nebulous problems uh, or do you want to work on a lot of unstructured problems? You want to work on loosely defined problems. You want to then make the problem statement. Then you want to explore new solutions for them. If that is what is interesting to you, you can go to a research mind drive or a research set. If mm -hmm. you want a more structured, you want your uh, colleagues or managers to tell you what is needed to be done and you want to finish that every Friday and then um, and you want to know structured for next week what I need to do then doing research might be stressful to you because you want a structure around it so uh, it all depends on your temperament your approach right so go with what works for you go with what is interesting to you right mm -hmm. just because that Steve did PhD or uh, Anil did not do it it doesn't mean that either of those uh, um, choices are correct your choice entirely depends on your situation what motivates you and what you want to do eventually. So look at those things and make a choice. Uh, always you can change the choice later. Not making a choice, just sitting and thinking is a problem. So now I have one practical question. Like we all want to earn money. We all want to be rich, right? And we have three options. One is be a software engineer, develop software. Second is be a hardcore VLSI engineer. 
and third is do something beyond VLSI, like embedded IoT or uh, explore communication part. So according to you, as an electronics engineer, which one we should pursue, like for earning more money? That depends, right? So all of this could pay you very differently, depending on where you are, which part of India you are, or which part of the world you are in, which company you are working for. There is no universal correct answer, right? So mm-hmm. um, so if earning more money uh, with what you know is important to you, so what you need to do is... Um, you, you, you will have to look at multiple options. Uh, you have to take the test or interview for all of them, get multiple offers, and then um, take the best offer. And if you cannot do that parallelly, maybe you interview for whatever you can, get the best offer from that, and then continue to interview for others. And mm-hmm. then uh, when you get a better opportunity, move on with that. So it can be done in different ways, depending on uh, uh, you know how you want to approach it. But uh, I only want to take a job that will pay me X, Y, Z amount below that I won't take a job then maybe it will take you three years to get that job and then you can see that for three that three years you may not be making any money if you are an mm-hmm. employee right at the end of three years is that more beneficial or you wanted to work somewhere and then get this job is that more beneficial I'm just making up a scenario those kind of scenario analysis you have to do yeah, yeah. and sometimes you may get the best most highest paying job but maybe you will quit that in six months because you don't like the colleagues or you don't like the manager or it is too far away from your hometown or uh, maybe it is in your other part of your hometown and the commute is going to take two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening and you don't get any time to spend with your family or watch a movie or do some gardening or wash your clothes or whatever that might be, right? So Mm -hmm. so it, it all depends, right? So we may think something is very attractive for us now. Once we get that and start experiencing it, maybe we will think, okay, this is not what I wanted. So at that time, don't stress about it. You should be willing to switch. You should be willing to be flexible, right? So being flexible is the key. Yeah. So you have raised this question like work-life balance. So in your 30 plus year of career, do you ever feel like you have compromised your work-life so work-life balance, you know, that term says that work is here, life is here, they are opposite mm-hmm. to each other, you know. Uh, so if you are going to have a success in work, then your life is going to be miserable. And if you are going to enjoy your work uh, life, then your work is going to be not high quality. Those kind of uh, uh, implications come when we talk about work-life balance, right? So I want to talk about work-life integration, right? So mm-hmm. work is a part of your life, so you cannot uh, treat it as an enemy, you know. Work Work should be something that you would enjoy to a great extent. You shouldn't be hating work. If you hate your work, stop doing it. That's what I would say, because it's not going to be physically healthy for you, mentally healthy for you, right? So work shouldn't become a burden for you, right? So you need to integrate work and life. And it is not going to be fully like the needle in the middle all throughout your life. Sometimes Mm -hmm. for several weeks together, you may have to put uh, more hours into your work to finish a project on time or to make a customer, to meet a customer commitment, etc. Then you should be flexible to do that but don't do that 365 days in any year 24 7 then you will be uh, not doing a good service to yourself or to the company itself your productivity will not be same if you work continuously right so try to be productive um, you know you you have your uh, outlook calendar or google calendar or you know set up time for yourself right so if you want to go for a walk that should be on your calendar if you want to take a nap in the middle of the day that is also fine but put it on your calendar and take that nap don't allow okay. others to come and uh, schedule a meeting on top of that you want to read a book um, during lunch time block the lunch time if you want if you want to take a nap around uh, sorry a walk around the campus with your friends put it on everybody's calendar that you are going to do that and you are not going to have a lunch time meet um, is that going to be the rule every time but you have to have an urgent meeting at lunch time you will be flexible you will cancel the walk for that day and walk in the night or something or walk early morning but you will have that meet right so make a schedule and be willing to do some trade-off right so yeah, if you're working somewhere yeah, your colleagues your management they want you to work as much as you can you know the work will never stop if you think you can finish all the work by friday evening and then relax uh, uh, in the weekend that is not going to happen right so some work will be left behind but you should have a timetable to finish that the next week or the week after whenever it is required right so you need to know your capacity plan accordingly right so don't uh, 
uh, overcome it. You should be able to say no to things that you don't value or you cannot do. Negotiate, right? So if somebody is sending an email, it doesn't mean that you have to immediately reply. Set your boundaries. You have to tell others about your preferences. Uh, you know, you communicate what you need and how you operate, right? So other people set the expectations. Other people know if I send an email to the HD, he will reply within 48 hours. If you are going on vacation, tell your colleagues that I won't be checking my email for next seven days. Then they know, don't bother you for seven days, right? But if you just suddenly disappear and uh, sometimes you have the teams running on your uh, phone, etc., people might think you are still at work and they may call it. So set the right expectations. Um, integrate work into life. Uh, work and life are not uh, two enemies. I actually love this question, really. It's too much in-depth answer. Uh, answer is like enlightened me, actually. I have learned many things from this answer. And one thing my manager also told, and I also experienced, like whenever I um, email somebody, right? And if they have some vacation uh, automated email, then I directly get that, yeah, they are in vacation. So I um, optimize my plan because they are in vacation. But if I don't get a automated mail from them, then I will be waiting for them when they will be online and I'll ask my query. So I think, yeah, in corporate culture, we need to be very accountable for our time. Like you said, if you want to go out to roam the campus, then make it scheduled that other people know, yeah, you are roaming outside your campus and you are not available. But it is all allowed. It's not like you need to work, work, and you don't have any time for lunch. We generally, like who, anybody who just want to go inside, want to get a job, we haven't earned our money. We think getting rich means uh, earning a lot of money, right? But is it a correct uh, definition of becoming rich, like having a lot of money? Having a healthy, happy, and balanced uh, of everything uh, mm -hmm. is what is actually rich for me, right? So um, you, you may have a lot of money, but if your health is not in good condition, are you really rich? Um, mm -hmm. you, you may have a lot of money, but you cannot travel to the places you want to then are you rich? Uh, you have a lot of money, but uh, you, you cannot go to the universities you want, then are you rich, right? So money is, is kind of a means that uh, helps us to enjoy our life. So um, we shouldn't be like slaves to money. Yes, yes. You know, we should control the money. Money shouldn't control us, right? So uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, that is my my own perspective, right? So I would like to have, you know, um, you know, um, when I go to the grocery store, I like the freedom of not thinking about how many things I can buy today. You know, I, I am very thankful for having that freedom. Uh, when I fill up the gas, you know, uh, you know, uh, or petrol in the car, right? So um, I'm, uh, you know, I have the freedom to fill full tank and not worry about how much I need to give today. I'm thankful for that. But beyond that, um, you know, if I have double that money, will will it make a difference? You know, you know, probably at that moment, no, right? I need to buy one tank of gas, and the next week I still need a one tank of gas, right? So mm -hmm. having that money is essential. But uh, having double the money to fill the gas in the same week, it doesn't that bring me any additional happiness, right? So, so yeah, you have to view it with a kind of a um, non-attached view, right? So you, you cannot get attached to anything too much, right? So money will come, money will go, but uh, your friends will be here, your family will be here, what you know will be here. If the, you did something good to me, I will remember that all until I die, irrespective of whether you had money or whether you don't have money or whether you will have more money in the future, right? So, so how you treat people, how you dealt with people, those things are important, right? So uh, time is more important in my mm -hmm. You cannot recreate time, you know. The time I went spent with you, uh, I cannot gain back that time. The time you spend with me, you cannot gain that back. So you, you are giving me the greatest gift by spending the time with me, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You give me some money, maybe I can repay that to you. You lose some money, but you can work a little bit more and, you know, maybe write a book or do some side gig and gain that money, right? If you decide to make that money. But uh, that much time you... Yesterday will never come back, right? So, mm -hmm. so okay. I think we should focus more on optimizing our time and using that time to optimize ourselves, optimize the community, optimize our work, optimize for the world, the country and the world. So in our third part of this video, we will discuss about the most important questions. And those are, do MTech or higher study is necessary to grow in the VLSI field? Do AI will really kill the VLSI engineer? And as Anil is working in EU, US, so we will ask him the most wanted question and it is like what are the opportunity in US if we compare with India and US or how to get into US with a VLSI job. We will demystify everything in our part 3. Till then if you haven't subscribed you need to subscribe it because the next video is coming very soon. See you in the next video. Tata. Bye bye.